So information systems don't come cheap. A fully loaded, if you will, ERP with a customer relationship management modules, CRM, supply chain management modules, full-blown production and manufacturing and so forth can cost millions of dollars, not just for the software, but even millions more to get it implemented inside the organization. Why would a company spend all that money if they weren't hoping to get something back on their investment? It's important to think about how and why companies buy them, buy ERPs, uh, and what kind of an impact they can have on a company's profitability. So let's start off just by taking a look at the income statement. All right, so we've got our income statement. And for an income statement, we're going to add revenues. Subtract cost of goods sold. And that's going to give us our gross margin. From there, we're going to subtract selling general and administrative costs. You know, we're going to subtract other things like interest and taxes, interest expense, taxes, and we eventually end up with our net income equals net income. So, We've got these various lines in the income statement. How do we use systems to impact these lines? Well, from a revenue standpoint, you can think of CRM for one thing. Customer relationship management is going to allow us to interact more directly with our customers and maybe let them initiate the interactions uh, as well. Uh, and some of the techniques that are incorporated into CRMs can help us build our customer base, uh, expand what we sell to existing customers, etc. Inc so increase the revenues. Let's think, and that's just one example. Let's think of cost of goods sold. Well, cost of goods sold, uh, the other type of software we've been talking about external to the organization is supply chain management. We can use supply chain management and the techniques uh, that it supports to help reduce our costs of ordering goods from vendors. Uh, it can help us carry the correct inventory, make sure we're, we have it in place where we need it at the right time so that we don't waste labor time waiting for what they need. That can help us with uh, reducing costs. Uh, it can also make sure that we don't keep inventory on hand too long or end up with inventory that we have to uh, write down because it's obsolete. All right, let's look at selling and uh, general administrative expenses. Well, that's where a lot of the various and sundry costs go. So if we can better manage even things like uh, office supplies, uh, payroll, uh, other administrative type expenses, through our systems, so uh, the efficiencies gained there can help us reduce those costs. Interest expense, well, we might have to pay interest uh, on money we took out in loans so that we could carry inventory. So if we're carrying less inventory, we can uh, reduce the money we have to use or tie up financing that inventory. And we could also, you know, maybe get better a better handle on debt obligations, uh, payables, uh, penalties for payables, uh, not paying within discount time frames, etc., and reduce uh, those types of expenses there. And of course, tax. From a tax perspective, we can use the uh, enterprise software to explore various tax scenarios and help determine what a good approach would be to help us reduce our tax liability. So all of these can impact the income statement uh, just uh, in general. Now, we can also use IT uh, accounting information systems strategically. What are some of the strategic roles? Well, 
if you think about the original use of accounting systems was basically to automate routine accounting activities collect transactions sort them post them to accounts uh, and then uh, generate reports so basically replacing human labor uh, standard labor for routine activities automation has continued in in ways uh, that we may not have originally anticipated medical records is one that's uh, taking place now uh, automating the production processes uh, certainly is a way that ERPs and AISs are helping organizations run more efficiently. Next one is Informate. So what do we mean with by Informate? Well, this was part of kind of a, a research model that came up called Automate, Informate, Transformate. We wanted to have everything end with an A and be active in nature, I guess. So anyway, Informate basically s says, well, not only do we want to have all this information in the accounting system or the AIS, the enterprise system, we want to be able to utilize it in a way that informs people throughout the organization. So you can informate up to senior management and the C-level. You can also informate down by spreading information to the rank and file of the employee base. So, and this can be important because areas of the company may discover things that are useful to other areas of the company. And unless you have a way to uh, communicate that, and uh, the accounting system and the ERP can play a major role in making that information available and letting people put together information in ways uh, that they may not have thought about just based on their own department. So informating up and also being able to uh, relay maybe some suggestions that are coming in from the production line up to management uh, through the system uh, is another way that you can informate up. Balance scorecard, uh, dashboard, reports for upper management are also ways that you can informate up provide them snapshots of a company's overall operations and let them drill into details as anomalies or exceptions come up and then finally we've got transformate and this is basically where we're looking to transform the way business is done through the efforts of uh, enterprise systems and technology, supporting technology. This was a, a big driver to some of the web-based industries that we now see, something like eBay, Craigslist, were able to basically take over the role that had been played by local newspapers classified sections. Amazon has taken over to a large degree the role that was previously played by bookstores and now they've expanded uh, into so many areas, appliance stores, uh, te television stores, uh, and even to a certain extent the big box stores like Walmart. So automate, informate, transformate. How does all this affect a company overall? Profitability, well, we looked at the income statement to see how it could affect that. What about the stock price or market capitalization? Well, when you think about stock price, you can actually subscribe to companies' news releases, press releases that they issue, and companies are generally going to issue press releases that they feel will be beneficial to the company. Other times they may do a press release uh, because they have to do something from a regulatory standpoint. Uh, maybe announce a security breach, for example, that may impact customer accounts. But for the most part, any discretionary PR releases are going to be of a good news type that say, here's what we're doing to help make more money, so why don't you invest more of your money with us? 
there for a while, all the company had to do was announce, hey, we're putting in a new ERP to give their stock price a little jump. Now, at that point, most people were just thinking, well, we're going to be automating our business processes, maybe streamlining our manufacturing or our distribution a little bit. Automate, pretty good jump there for a while. Maybe uh, into the 90s, um, late 90s, that would be a good way to give your stock price a bump. Well, once so many companies had ERPs that it wasn't novel, it was no longer a differentiator. So now you couldn't just say, well, we're going to automate our processes. You had to come up with something a little bit better, make a better use of your technology investment. And that's where the whole Informate came, came into play, where now... We're going to describe how we are going to disseminate and inform people throughout the organization with our new software and ERP implementations. So Informate was able to give stock prices even a bigger jump. And then, as with anything, once companies find that a particular technology or set of technologies is useful, then everybody jumps on board. So it, again you know, ceased to be as much of a differentiator. And then uh, we moved into where a company had to be able to uh, demonstrate where we're going to transform our entire organization and our entire business processes uh, in order to get that stock price bump. And you can see in the textbook, uh, in recent studies, uh, with these different types of announcements, you, you can see that the automate stock bump is uh, pretty small nowadays. The Informate stock bump is uh, bigger, uh, but uh, way leading the pack is the transformate or the transform uh, announcement with regard to the stock price. So investors are still paying attention to companies that are making investments in technology. It used to be all that you had to say was we're investing in technology and you got to lift out of that. Now you have to describe in a little bit more detail what you're doing with the technology, what type of technology you have in or are putting in place, and what kind of expertise you're bringing in to fully utilize that new technology.